this process might seem overwhelming. But with a little practice, it can soon become a pleasurable experience. This is such a crazy, twisted, twisty, supremely effed up story. What do you guys remember about reading the script for the first time and, and how you reacted to it? I just, uh, I, I remember I, I got sent it from my um, my agent and I was thinking about doing a, a different job at the time. So he kind of like sneakily sent it <laughs> and was like, this is really good. Like, I think you should look at this. And at the time I was kind of like, I don't know, like I'm kind of fine. Um, but I, I started reading it because it, you know, so it was a horror and he said it was really great. And then I just, I was just like gleeful as I was reading it. It was just great. And it just kept getting better and better and better. And then as I started to get the tone of it, I was just like, oh my God, I'm so into this. Like I so need to be a part of this. Um, yeah, I thought it was fantastic. I was reading it in a, in a RV, in a little trailer um, van that I had. And I had to stop reading it because I was in the middle of, I was in this RV park in the middle of Louisiana, like a real horror movie setting. And, and so I, I, I couldn't finish it because it was so scary, which sounds like a made up anecdote, but um, I, really, I really couldn't get through it, uh, which is embarrassing because I was a 43 year old man. And um, so I, I, I read the rest the next morning and it was, you know, there, I, I just hadn't read a script like that. Not, not only was it scary, it was just um, so unexpected. Some of these turns that it took, uh, and tonally, like tonal shifts that were wild. Um, yeah, I just was so grateful that Zach wanted me to be a part of it. I, I, because I, I love the genre, and so I knew it would be if he if he shot it properly, which which he ended up doing. Uh, it would be cool. What can you say about the origins of this crazy, crazy story and how it first popped into your brain? You know, I, I had read a book called The Gift of Fear, uh, which is a book that is encouraging women to pay close attention to these uh, often um, ignored red flags that men can put out in day-to-day -day interactions, like little subtle things men can do that could be indicative of, of a predator. And those like little flags- Like microaggressions, yeah. Yeah, microaggressions, sure. Things like, um, you know, uh, doing a woman a favor that she didn't ask you to do, uh, injecting a light sexual you know, comment into an otherwise non-sexual conversation, uh, touch, even if it's not sexual, you know, when not asked for. There's lots of little things that women just have to constantly be tracking and they have to be aware of. And as I was reading this, I just, it just, I had a very st stark realization that like, this is not a part of my life. Like as a man, I don't have to divert any of my mental energy into identifying potential threats on a day to day basis. Mm -hmm. And that sucks. That's a real bummer. And so um, I didn't want to write a movie. I just wanted to write a scene just for myself to just kind of ruminate on this idea and just put a woman in a situation that I could load with as many of these red flags as possible. And so I came up with a double booked Airbnb. And I just kind of took it from there. And then I, I didn't really think about where I was going. I just typed and I just followed my nose. And this is the movie that came out of it. Georgina, Zach has talked about how the initial premise for this movie came from his sort of awakening to red flags that women have to look for when encountering new men. Was that pretty apparent to you reading the script? That there was this, a very conscious, very inherent commentary on sort of gender dynamics and intrusion. And, and was, it, was that a big draw for you? I mean, a hundred percent. I think just starting with those um, those little things at the beginning, um, when she first gets to the Airbnb and there's a guy there, and um, which is Bill Skarsgård, and you know he kind of makes her tea, and she didn't ask for tea, and he's trying to touch her stuff, and she's kind of like, just let me do that. Like you don't need to be involved in this. Um, I definitely related um, to some of that. Um, and then it, as it grows, you know, there's a point where she, she goes downstairs into the basement and witnesses something and comes and tries to explain to him what she's seen. And uh, I, I had that reaction when I saw the set that um, she's talking about. Uh, and it's amazing to then see Bill Skarsgård's character kind of being like, I don't, what's the problem here? Like, I don't really understand why you're feeling so scared about this. And those like very different ways that um, a woman kind of goes into a, a situation and feels fear than necessarily a man would. Justin, AJ feels almost like an amalgamation of like 
fortunately, many, many folks in Hollywood would have been exposed for some pretty awful misdeeds in, in recent years. Yeah. Was there, was there any tiny part of you that was apprehensive about playing this role, like considering how close it, it hits home in your own business? Not at all. If anything, it was it was made me that much more eager to do a part like that because um, I think it's an important type of character to expose and to examine, and um, the way Zach uses the character is uh, to tell uh, an important story about men and women that Georgie touched on is. Um, is really valuable. So in some ways, the more despicable the character is, the better for the story and for the overall point that he's making. Was that a tough role to cast, considering sort of you're offering it to other Hollywood actors who could have worked with or been friends with some of these guys? I, no, I don't care about any of that stuff. I mean, like, I, if somebody's like, hey, I'm friends with somebody who got me too, that's not cool. It's like, I don't give a yeah. um, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, but it was, I, the problem was in my, my own imagination. I had been originally thinking of that role, thinking, who can I cast that's villainous? I was trying to think of like a bad guy actor. And when I had the idea that like, oh, that's the wrong attitude. I need Tom Hanks. I need a charming, affable, endearing, warm, nice guy. Because mm -hmm. that's going to make this role really pop. And I was like, who's Tom Hanks? Who, who do I, who's in Justin Long? As soon as I had that attitude shift, he was top of the list.